one of the most celebrated people in the world, desperate not to be recognized. Greta Garbo was the screen's most popular actress. So why did she retire so early and hide behind a veil of secrecy for the rest of her life? She is the prototype for the mysterious, aloof, enigmatic star fleeing from the spotlight, but always intrigued by it as well. There was always a very elusive quality about her. She was somehow lost in whatever world she happened to find herself in. And that, of course, was the great mystery of her. Why was she lost? Where had she come from? There were all these question marks surrounding her. I find it kind of strange to think that she made movies in the first place, because she was, the whole time, she, she was more governed by fear than she was by the desire to, to make films. Garbo was full of dualities, complexities, and contradictions, and that is what is so attractive about her. The only way she could reveal herself and expose some deeper feelings was in acting. So that acting was her kind of secret, coded way, if you like, of expressing herself. She pretty much lived the life that she wanted to, but it still seems a lonely life, uh, you know, living a life apart. There was this sort of feeling that there was uh, this um, goddess walking among us, or, or in a sense, a, a, a unicorn, a myth mythological figure that only some people might see, that you might catch a glimpse of. And it was kind of a wonderful thing, particularly when I was growing up in the uh, 60s in Manhattan, that uh, there was always the hope that, that you might see her. Almost any New Yorker from that era can tell you some kind of story about seeing Garbo on the streets in New York. Window shopping. She loved to window shop. She loved to go into the different antique stores. I would follow her around at the antique shows. I never spoke to her. She never spoke to me. Even though once she picked up a, an object that I had put down, um, she never spoke to anybody as far as I could see. I never heard her voice. I was walking uh, uh, up Fifth Avenue, and suddenly there she was. And she walked into the store. It was a Japanese store that sold, um, oh, you know, all sorts of silly stuff, you know, lampshades and lanterns and figurines. And she walked in there, and I followed her. And there was nobody else in the store except the Japanese uh, salesman who didn't seem to know who she was. And oh, my heart was pounding, and, and I, I, I knew that she didn't like being approached, but she was at a table in the middle of the store, and she was on one side of the table, and I was on the other, and she was looking through these Indian print bedspreads, and, and I just kept kind of, you know, looking up so I could look at her face and kind of looking down before she would notice I was looking at her. And finally, I just, I just couldn't take it anymore. It was just too, too exciting, and I, I ran out of the store and I went into the, uh, an art supply store just across the street, and I said to the owner, I said, you know, Garbo is, is in Azuma across the street, and he just fled, left his own store mid-afternoon, and just abandoned it <laughs> to catch a glimpse of her. And I think that's really what it was like for everybody in New York. Of all the stars who have ever fired the imagination of film audiences, None has radiated the magnetism of Greta Garbo. Here she is as her public knew her. In reality, she had a horror of crowds and a loathing of publicity. And there was a contradiction between the character on the screen 
and the real person. She abandoned the screen when she was only 36 and from then on lived a very different life. Other actresses might have been delighted to have fans still passionate about them after 50 years, but not Garbo. She hid herself away in this apartment building in New York for the rest of her life, apparently a recluse. Even to her closest friends, she was something of an enigma. They emphasized how Swedish she was and how difficult to understand, unless one understood the Swedes. My feeling about the first time that I saw Greta Garbo's building on East 52nd Street was that I thought I was turning down a street in Stockholm. I think that's one of the things that Greta Garbo liked about where she lived and why she remained rooted there. It reminded her of home, of the traffic on the East River being very much like what she used to see as a kid growing up in Stockholm. Even today, you can feel walking around those streets, you can feel what it might have been like at the turn of the 20th century with dirt roads leading out to the edges of the island, the click clack of the horse-drawn carts. It was a place where there was always a smell of coal, whale oil lingering in the air. Garbo was born Greta Gustafsson in 1905 and lived in this tenement block. I think a lot of people have the impression that uh, Garbo was aristocratic, uh, or that her background was, and in fact, it was anything but. Uh, she was from a very working class, background and family, and that is when the family was working. Her father had difficulty finding a job, and the economic conditions of the family were very um, difficult most of the time. Her mother had to take in laundry and sewing, and uh, it was not an aristocratic background. 